Hello, this is Mr. Atherall. Um, we're going to talk about Jekyll and Hyde in this video, um, chapters 9 and 10. So these are the last two chapters of, of the novel. Pick out some ideas, pick out some quotes, hopefully talk about some helpful stuff in terms of just considering it in preparation for your exam. So chapters 1 to 8 tell the story of Jekyll and Hyde in a chronological order. Um, and then 9 and 10 go back and we have Lanyon's narrative, chapter 9, and then we have... Jekyll's narrative for chapter 10, um, or, or Henry Jekyll's full statement of the case. So we get their perspectives on it. Now we already know that Lanyon has died. Lanyon has died um, because of something shocking he's seen, um, and, and we, we might have inferred what that is, but this is the moment where it's revealed exactly what happens. Now what Lanyon did see is he saw Hyde come to his house and then drink some potion and turn back into Henry Jekyll, which shocked him to the point where he died from that. Now, the quotes that I think is just... Well, I think Lanyon, first, in terms of the character, is an interesting character. Um, in terms of his scientific beliefs, he's very much the Victorian scientist who struggles to accept anything that is outside of his own worldview. So the advances in science, technology... Um, evolution, things outside of religion that he wouldn't have been happy about. He is he is unaccepting of those things, and so that's that's just an important thing to recognise in his character, and that's why he can't handle seeing this happen because it you know, blows his mind to the point where he dies from that situation. So Hyde says to him, "Your sight shall be blasted by a prodigy to stagger the unbelief of Satan." So there's that, there's that spiritual edge in there and, and the reference to Satan. Obviously, this is an evil thing. Um, and that's, that's, what, that's what Stevenson's kind of alluding to there. But your sight will be blasted. That, that verb blasted is an important one because there's a destruction of all the... You know, there's a destruction of your worldview, a destruction of um, your kind of previous held beliefs. And eventually, and, and not far afterwards, the destruction of yourself. So what you're going to see is going to is going to blast you. You're going to be blasted by a prodigy. A prodigy is a genius to stagger your unbelief. Um, and Hyde also tells him that your beliefs are narrow and material. So your beliefs about you know what you can see, material things, and they're narrow. They don't go outside this narrow um, boundaries, which is exactly what I've been saying about him being a Victorian man, respectability. Science. This is how it should work. This is how I'm 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 managing it. Earlier in the novel, we talked about um, Jekyll being a man of, you know, scientific balderdash, and so that's that. That idea is again explored explored here. He, when we hear what Lanyon says, he said, "My soul sickened." There is a sicken, a sickening at a soul level. We've got some sibilance there. The idea of being sickened. We can explore all those reasons why his soul be sickened. And, and, and again, it links back to his worldview being destroyed by what he's seen. So chapter 9 tells us that story um, of, 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 of what Lanyon sees. And then we get the, 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 the story from um, Henry Jekyll's perspective. Now, if you're going to read the novel again, which you may do, um, but it's getting pretty close to the exam now, one chapter, if you were going to, rather, if you're going to read one chapter, chapter 10 is the one to read. It goes back for everything, it really nails um, how Jekyll feels about the world. So he, there's just tons of great quotes in this. So he talks about, I concealed my pleasures. So I concealed my pleasures. There's an idea there that society forces me to stop doing the things I want to do, which is why he, he started, up, started on this process and was so tempted by it, because his pleasures were concealed, his the things that he enjoyed were repressed. He couldn't uh, get the things he wanted to do happening in the world because they weren't acceptable by in society's um, standards. So he concealed his pleasures um, and he talks about the um, good and ill which divide and compound man's dual nature. So man has got a dual nature. They have a desire to do good, a desire to do evil. And that is, that is, that is who we are made up to be. So his belief in duality, his belief in this double-sided personality that we have is something that is, is, is really important. Um, he also says, I have been doomed to such a dreadful shipwreck. Okay, so lovely metaphor, they're not a real shipwreck, obviously. So I've been doomed to a, 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 a dreadful shipwreck. That man is not truly one, but truly two. So just that man's not one, but two, 
that idea of being a shipwreck, the fact that I recognise that in myself, I recognise this double-sidedness that I can't be who I am, eventually destroys him because he acknowledges that truth and then chases that truth, chases the ability to be both people, but that chasing of it is eventually destructive. He also describes duality as primitive. It's, it's something we've always had. It goes back to our instinctive caveman days that, we, that, we, that, that we've got this primitive duality, that there's two sides in us, to which perhaps in caveman days you were allowed to let out, that society didn't, didn't repress and push down. But now we're not allowed to, to, um, to express those things. He talks about, um, also, one more quote that I'm going to do, the agonised womb of consciousness. So womb, obviously, that's, that's where people are, boom, are born. Um, there, there's a sense of a, a agonised birthing. I've got this thing inside me, it's got to come out. I'm denying it life. The, the, the consciousness, the fact that I'm conscious of the things I want to do, but don't do them, destroys me. So, I mean, chapter 10, there's, there's loads of great quotes in there. I've gone through just four or five there but loads of things which just just really express this sense of I can't be who I was made to be so there's, there's society's expectation squash squash who we who we want to be in in Victorian times so there's that idea in there and then there's just just great metaphors great bits of language that we can talk about the idea of duality the idea of what Stevenson's getting at in terms of who man really is not truly one but truly two um, so loads of Really great quotes um, in that last chapter. Just I'd encourage you to, to to read it again, but certainly nail some of those 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 really important quotes. Um, I hope that's all been really helpful for you. Hope you do really well in the exam. Thank you.